John Tani Obaro, Managing Director, System Specs. Having enjoyed a successful career with International Merchant Bank, IMB, John Obaro founded System Specs some 29 years ago as a West African partner to Systems Union UK, offering the Sun System suite of solutions. The company soon started developing its own proprietary payroll and human resource management solution, Human Manager, which has become the preferred choice for many leading public and private sector organizations in Nigeria and West Africa. Ladies and gentlemen, John Tani Obama. It's my privilege to be in front of you. And I want to start by saying a big thank you to the organizers for giving me the privilege to come and um, share what they call the Remita story. And um, I hope we will be able to learn one or two things together as we begin to talk about how to use technology in our businesses at times like this. I also want to say a very big thank you to our customers. Without you, we would have no story to tell. We also want to say a big thank you to banks, partners, other tech firms that we do a lot of things with. And lastly, I want to say thank you to the people who are my backbone, the current and next staff of system specs, people who have labored to bring the organization to where we are today. Some 29 years ago, I resigned from my job at then IMB after about 10 years experience in the banking industry. I was well remunerated. Um, I had a good career ahead of me. But then I had become very restless. Um, I was staying five minutes away from the office in a house, a swimming pool for a young man, security, 24-hour power. Everything was fine. But then I knew that the future of this country needed computers beyond banking. At that point in time, not much was happening outside the banking industry. Now, to save funds, to start off this business, I moved to a place called Agbara Estate in Ogun State. Now, moving to Agbara Estate meant traveling hours. Uh, but by God's grace, I was able to summon the courage. Of course, many people condemned me, were scared that you must be out of your mind. But well, banking on God's favor, we were able to start off the company in January 1992. So in a few months' time, we would actually be 30 years old. Thank you. Now, when we started, from the beginning, we knew that our eyes had to be on God, that it can only be God. So we said we would depend on God for success. And this had always been part of our values as an organization. Exemplars of ethics and integrity in business, who have practiced friendship with our customers, open family-based relationship at work, partnership with our neighbors. That was when we had neighbors before COVID. Now that the office is empty because we still work from home, our neighbors have become everybody on the net. Innovation and diligence in pursuit of excellence. These were our driving values from day one. I've been asked to share the Remita story, but the Remita story cannot be told without human manager and the PENCOM Act 2004. You will see why later. Now, Human Manager was launched in 1995. It was a trailblazer in the use of web technology for HR and payroll management. And one of the pioneers of the employee self-service in HR and payroll management. 
globally. As at the time we started doing self-service in the product, not many applications worldwide had started employee self-service uh, for HR and payroll. One of our first major projects was a payroll and biometrics project for the Ogun State Government in 2003. We partnered with one or two other firms to deliver uh, what you call a ghost elimination project then. Now that project positioned us for the pilot project of the IPIS, the Integrated Payroll and Personnel Information System of the federal government. Now, we competed with about 16 other firms, global firms, for that project. We won the project by God's grace, and um, it was delivered towards the end of the tenure of the former president, Olusha Mwabasanjo. Incidentally, in his book, My Presidential Legacy, he proudly commended and said he was proud that this project was delivered by an indigenous firm, System Specs. We successfully deployed that project to save government 450 million naira monthly on the pilot of an estimated 50,000 employees. So within 50,000 employees, we were able to save 50 million, and the plan was to roll the project across 1.2 million estimated employees of the federal government. Now, there's a popular saying on the story of inventions. First, they ignore you, then they laugh at you, then they fight you, then you win. It was actually said by Nicholas Klein, a labor leader, although has been severally misattributed to Mahatma Gandhi, but the person who actually coined that phrase is Nicholas Klein. After General Obasanjo left office, a lot of things started. Let me dwell on one of them. The World Bank investigations. Some of our competitors who lost out wrote to the World Bank, how could a local Nigerian software firm upstage well-known international brands? They must have bribed. So we got a letter from the integrity arm of the World Bank, we are coming to investigate you on social dates. To prepare for this investigation, you have to get all your invoices, all your books, all your everything, all your documents in five copies. And they had a long list of things that we needed to get ready. We thought it was a joke that how would you come and investigate where a private firm? We contacted our lawyers, who incidentally is my pastor today, and then um, we wanted to do some shakara that no, you cannot infringe on our rights. We wrote back. And they wrote an even stronger worded letter as to how we will be blacklisted and the lot of things they will do worldwide if we uh, do not give our cooperation. And then we thought about it. In any case, why not let them come? So they came. The preparation was not a small thing. The documents we had to prepare, just about every sheet of paper in the firm was what they wanted to look at. Four high-level investigators came in from Washington. We did not know they had even been in the country before then to talk to just about every other person that bid it. 
when eventually they arrived, they were with us for two weeks in Abuja. Two week intensive on site investigation, 8 to 5 p.m. every day. Looking back today, we cannot but continue to give thanks to our God because at the end of the day, we were vindicated. This, thank you. This vindication of a Nigerian company, when everything has been painted, that to get business in Nigeria, you must play games. So for a software firm to have upstaged foreign firms, clearly they came in confident that a lot of things had happened. The first set of questions that they asked, it was a case of follow the money, okay? And they wanted to know just about every penny, all our bank statements and everything was what they went through. And at the end of the day, I mean, I was there for the first day and then I left them. We had a project director who was with them throughout the period. At the end of the, period, the investigation, they shook his hand and congratulated him about how our records were so much in order and they were satisfied in their findings. More importantly, the following year, they now invited us, system specs, to participate in a World Bank executive development program on fighting corruption globally through collective action in today's competitive marketplace. Now, we saw that as something of good comfort because they were now soliciting our support to stand as ambassadors in the fight against corruption. Now, let me now begin to talk a little more about the Remita story. In the year 2007, we did a case study on Petroleum Equalization Fund. After we successfully deployed Remita. The former president, Musaya Radwa of Blessed Memory, thereafter directed all federal government payments must be made electronically. That laid the foundation for electronic payments in this country. And I think this country owes that man a lot of gratitude for that singular instruction towards the end of 2008. We were thereafter involved in the cleanup and payment of federal government pensions. Then came a self-claimed pension reformer. This self-acclaimed pension reformer was actually against anything electronic. And we eventually fell out with him. This self-claimed reformer booted us out of three major projects. Petitions were instigated against us to the National Assembly. But in one of the petitions, the petitioners in the chronicle of events unknowingly started celebrating us because the times they, they said were the best times were the times we were on the project before we were booted out. That was when we also recommended to the government to introduce biometrics for the verification of pensioners. Our proposal was hijacked, totally muddled up, because we just couldn't speak the same language. When we were booted out of this exercise, it was a major disruption 
to our businesses. But in God we trusted, as salaries became irregular, bills were unpaid, the Senate instituted a pro panel. The Senate recommended the sack of this self-acclaimed reformer who is still telling tales till today. I've not mentioned anybody's name, but if you know the history of pensions in Nigeria, the name will not be in doubt. This same Senate report commended system specs as the only one that was doing a thorough job amongst all the companies that were paraded before the company. Thank you. Now, what is Remita? By 2005, we had developed Remita as a one-stop solution to empower organizations to pay salaries across all banks. Remember I said we had human manager, which was a payroll and HR application? And then, when you want to pay salaries, you want to press a button and pay across all banks. It would also deliver the tax schedules across all the different states. To deliver contribution deduction schedules to different cooperatives, as many as you have in that organization. But what actually propelled us was the PENCOM Act of 2004, because we had anticipated that organizations would have challenges sending schedules to multiple PFAs and PFCs. So we now built the system around that act. That was the first version of Remita. Market needs, however, influenced the expansion of scope to vendor payment and collections. And this was what positioned us for greater things later on. The next major thing that happened was that we got an invitation for the almighty Treasury Single Account System, TSA, during a routine CBN visit. The word stopgap was used because at that point in time, government had felt they would not be able to implement the TSA as recommended by the World Bank because the technology was not there. But when they came to our office during a routine visit, they were excited about what they saw and then invited us to Abuja to make various presentations to different teams. It was after that that they said, okay, they will use Remita pending when they have what would be a permanent solution. Fifteen years on, we're still standing, and we give all glory to God for that. The TSA pay payment and collection system, zero checkbook costs, generally, for those who are fully compliant. So you say no check needs to be written at the federal level, and that's been on for years now. And a lot of other benefits, minus all our own challenges and afflictions. One of the interesting things we introduced were online receipts. And this has gone a long way to minimize corruption within the system. I'll give you a simple example. When we came on board, we had a situation where people would make a payment, take the receipt to online depots across the country and use it to load fuel. They would take the same receipt to another depot, and we are talking of hundreds of millions of naira, by the way, so somebody carries the same receipt to load 
in Lagos, takes it to Portacot, to load again, takes it another, the same receipt. When we discovered that this was the practice, all we needed to do was to put on all remitters receipts that all receipts must be validated online. Each time the receipt is used anywhere, it is then updated on the system and we mark it for the necessary officials to know that this receipt has been used. You can imagine what had been happening before using electronic payments. Government now has easy visibility of transactions happening in the space. And interestingly, one of the contemporary cases on ground, many of you would have followed the Kogi State and EFCC misunderstanding in recent times. EFCC received a petition that something funny was going on, and rightly, EFCC had to investigate. Kogi State, on the other hand, felt they had done nothing wrong and therefore stood up to defend themselves. And at the end of the day, one of the ways by which the misunderstanding was cleared was to get back to Remita. And from Remita, we presented the necessary reports and EFCC was satisfied and the matter was resolved. One of the areas we also help um, businesses is in data referencing, especially in the area of retail lending. We provide data for lenders for them to be able to make intelligent decisions to increase their chances of giving out good loans such that recovery is um, better secured. We also have things like direct debit so that when facilities are given out, we're able to suck back the funds. And um, I said churches, since we're in a church environment, yes, a number of churches have also adopted the system to enable them move funds, especially from the different levels, from zones to districts to headquarters, and depending on the structure of the organizations. We also have SMEs across different sectors of the economy that are able to integrate with the application for their own operational efficiencies what we call open banking, which is now being formalized by the central bank. One of the advantages of open banking is that you can manage your accounts across all banks, manage all other areas of your involvement where you are a signatory, and you have a comprehensive oversight on all your funds across multiple banks. Now, one of the ways this has helped organizations, like I said, on the left, for instance, we say a typical Nigerian firm or individual has accounts across multiple banks, three, four, five, ten banks. You do not need to go into ten different apps. With one app, you are able to aggregate all your accounts on one screen, you're able to see your balances on each of them. You're able to see your gross total at any point in time. When it is time for you to make a payment, you specify which of the banks you want to fund from, and you're able to debit from each of those accounts um, and have a comprehensive report at the end of the day. And then to the right of your screen, is what we also call the multi-company or multi-organization feature. So if, for instance, 
you have your business, you have another, maybe you are running two, three businesses, or you are a signatory in multiple organizations. You're probably a signatory to your church account. You're a signatory to your town council, the typical Sunday, Sunday meeting. You are the treasurer. You have your own business you are running. You have one or two other NGOs. You can have all of them in one app. You pick the one you want to do, including your personal account. You just switch to the one you want active and be able to monitor and approve transactions as the case may be. What we're saying is that multi-company, multi-bank, all of them in one app. Now, part of what this can do for you is that it allows your customers to pay for products and services online. It will help you to increase your revenue. It will help to increase your revenue because it has provided people the convenience to pay you uh, through different channels. This will also help to expand your customer base. Because since you are able to provide that convenience, it will make it easy for people to pay, pay you using debit cards, mobile money, wallets. So you are able to provide convenience to people at their point of need. This, of course, will also improve customer satisfaction because the process will be convenient, easy, and quick. Furthermore, it can help to automate your process, your processes. So things like direct debit, you can even institute um, recurring payments for direct debits. Now, if you can get into your customers, either for subscription or what have you, then you'll find that uh, having registered with you once, they do not need to keep coming back for um, their transactions. This, of course, will reduce your expenses because as you use cash for your transactions, it comes with a lot of overhead. A lot of paperwork. You need to do your invoices. You need to do your bills and print them on paper. But with the trend these days, all of this can be done electronically. You no longer need to carry cash to deposit in your bank. The security concerns, especially in our environment now, once upon a time, you have to be going, if you're, especially traders coming from the east, attacked on the way. But now you have the option of being fully electronic. All of this simply leads to increased sales and productivity for you and something which uh, I want to commend to each and every one of us. One of the ways Remita does this, I'm not sure how clear the screen is to you, but one of the things it does is that anytime somebody wants to pay you, it asks them how they want to pay. For some people, they want to use their cards to pay. For some people, they want to use their bank accounts. For some people, they want to walk into a bank branch or an agency. For some people, they want to use their USSD. For some people, they want to pay with the internet banking of their banks. Some people who are registered on Remita want to pay directly from within Remita. For some people, they want to use their wallets to pay. Different type of wallets, paga, or what have you. And so for some people, they want to use their phone number from uh, UPSL or whatever. All of these are on the system. And what a business needs to do is to have a single integration to Remita. 
Once you have that single integration to Remitter, anytime your customers want to pay you, they are presented with this bouquet. It does not matter what they choose. The money will come into your own account and you would have a comprehensive view of all that has been paid to you. Now, that's a big summary of what we have for you on Remitter. But I dare say that more than the smartness or intelligence or anything you may want to ascribe to ourselves is the heavenly guide. It's very important that we hear from God at every turn. One of the one of the people that ginger me on is somebody called George Muller, who as at the time of his death, was said to have read the Bible nearly 200 times, cover to cover. And the hundred of those times were on his knees. There can be no better source of inspiration but to put ourselves in a position where we can always hear from God to guide us in the little decisions and in the big decisions decisions. We need vision to move on. Like Proverbs says in 29.18, where there is no vision, the people perish. We need to be diligent. Like scripture says, and something we have on our walls in the office, seest thou a man diligent in his business. He will stand before kings. He shall not stand before mean men. We must be ready to work very hard. Integrity. Integrity is something that we talk about, but I want to encourage us to hold on very, very tightly onto. It pays, sometimes not in the short term, but certainly in the long term. We're 30 years next month, by God's grace, I mean next year, by God's grace, and I can say that um, like the agricultural people said in the earlier session, that there are some things that you have to be in it for the long haul. It's no quick fix. And then, of course, we must have the right attitude. When the attitudes are right, there is no barrier too high, no dream too extreme, and no challenge too great by Charles Swindle. Then, of course, we talk of perseverance. When we talk of perseverance, the Nigerian climate, you need to put on double shield and hold on tenaciously. Many people know part of our challenges on the TSA. What I will not tell you is that before it became public issue for almost four years, we had been working quietly without anything significant. Some months, maybe you get 50,000. Some months, best of months, maybe 100,000. And we won that for four years, running at a loss. Then when this, the Buhari administration came in and said, everybody get on the TSA, there was visibility and then there was a lot of noise because of the monies that were to be moved through the platform. But we remained in there. Um, at the peak of it, we were even asked to re refund all the monies we had collected. We were not in it for the money. We were very excited that God had given us the privilege to make a landmark in our country. And we knew that it had succeeded. So we returned the money. We had the Senate probe and everything. And at the end of the day, um, yes, there's a lot of clamor on, oh, why should it be 
one unknown company. And incidentally, many people said the company belongs to a politician whose name I won't mention on this platform. Um, he, in fact, the, the word remitter was associated with his wife. And um, the last two alphabets, they said, matched his own name too. And therefore, it belongs to that person. I'm sure some of you know the name I'm talking about. You know, But God saw us through. In fact, at a point, I started doubting that maybe I had changed my name. But the Lord saw us through. Perseverance. Team building... I want to thank God for the people he has blessed me with in system specs. Some of them have been with me um, from the very beginning. Uh, some three, four days after the company started. Some have retired, exited now, but we remain the best of friends. And in fact, I, the Alumni Association, I think they have a program next week. You know. So I really want to thank God for these people. Do we have challenges? You bet. In closing, I'll talk about some of these challenges. The major one is talent. Increasingly becoming difficult to get the right caliber of people to take us to the next level. The next one I talked about is what I call the Canada exits. Canada, just a placeholder. It is now UK, Germany, everywhere. In fact, the one that pained me most was another one called Malta. Just about all countries, Ghana, everywhere. The new work culture, we work from home. Incidentally, we opened a new office um, at Oniru. We moved from where we are. We were after about 26, 27 years. Moved to Oniru, and within one, two months, COVID happened. So we've not had the privilege of enjoying the office. We've been operating from home. Now that comes with some benefits. Incidentally. I saw a blog by one of our staff yesterday really celebrating working from home. It has some benefits, but it also comes with some drawdown. Okay. Uh, so having to balance the positive and the negatives of the new work culture remains a challenge. Another problem we have is that People can now even sit down in Nigeria and earn dollars. They work from Nigeria and earn dollars. And um, you have a situation in which even if you are paying, paying a staff one millionaire a month and you think you are paying him very well, um, all he needs to do is get a $2,000 job because of what the exchange rate is. Now, a company in the U.S., we gladly pay $5,000 a month and take it as cheap labor. So if they find that this guy is from a third world country, they can give him $3,000, okay? Even if they give him the $5,000, it becomes more challenging uh, to be able to compete under that kind of setting. And then there's what I call regulatory uncertainties. A number of things happening in this environment that makes it a bit more challenging to be able to plan. Finally, for us in this space, there is what I call constant watch out for our boys. If you are in this industry, you will know what I mean. You know, uh, just as what I tell my guys is that just as we resume at the office to build systems, you also have people resuming somewhere else, planning how to tear down systems. They're doing everything they can to look for loopholes, to commit fraud, and play all sorts of games. 
uh, one of our most challenging times was during the NSAS protests, where some people alleged that since they couldn't get the government, they should bring down Remita, that if you bring down Remita, it would affect the government. I have nothing to do with government. I'm running a private business. But we thank God. Uh, we had a lot of people coming to our, on our defense, even in the social media. But more importantly, was that we needed to I mean, work around the clock to ensure that we secure the platform. So uh, these are some of the challenges of the industry. But then, overall, it's been a pleasant journey, a good journey, and I commend to you, for as many of you as are running one business or the other, to find a way of integrating with a payment platform. Thank you very much.